Today's video is going to be on CMake Super Builds, what they are, and why you might want to use one. Let's do it. You just got to create a branch and get on with it. So Super Builds, what on earth is that? Well, if you find yourself in the situation where you have a project that has several dependencies and you want a robust way to be able to build all those dependencies and get a end product of uh, maybe a package of your, your project uh, all together, or just have a repeatable way of reconstructing a good build environment for your project, uh, a super build is a wonderful tool to do this. External project can do a lot. There's a lot there. So today's video is really focused on opening your eyes to the benefits of a super build and why you might want to build one and a few examples to whet your appetite to go learn more about how external project works. Let me know down in the comments if a deep dive on external project is interesting after you see what we look at today. So with that, let's get started. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you guessed it, we're starting with documentation. And the documentation in question is for external project. There's so much here. Uh, there's a lot to digest. So let's review the high level things that we're trying to accomplish. External project is one big command that is trying to go get source from somewhere, extract that to a particular location to potentially patch that source with any number of, of source code patches, to configure a build, to do the build, install it, and potentially test it. Now, all of those steps are places you can override what the command is that happen. So if you have if your project that you're trying to build with external project is CMake, if it's a CMake project, this is the easiest way to use it and the only way I've actually used it. I know external project can do lots of things, including build projects that don't use CMake because you can override any command at any time with whatever you need. But we're going to focus on the project in question is a CMake project uh, and that's the best I'll be able to show you. Uh, It'd be fun to hear your experiences down in the comments below with using external project with a non CMake dependency you're trying to build with it. So there, there's a lot here. Just know that when we talk about like the download step and the, the patch step and the configure step, those, those things are what we're trying to accomplish at a high level. And then there's several ways to do it. So for instance, the download step, you could download a particular from a URL uh, like a zip file of source. This is, is super common with GitHub. You can get a URL to a GitHub project, a particular branch or a particular tag, and just download a zip of the source from that state. Uh, but also external project can do fancy things like clone an entire Git repository and then check out particular tags or branches, uh, do control things with submodules in Git. It can do subversion checkouts, mercurial, eh, mercurial, checkouts see all this fun stuff so it's up to you for um obviously which one of these to choose i have used git repos and it's been okay i mostly use source downloads from github has been my workflow uh things like the patch command you can you know run like a git patch if you need it uh i haven't needed that personally but I'm, a, I'm thinking about using it in a couple of places, which looks interesting. Remember the configure step is what we're like, if it's a CMake project, when you run CMake, I would be configuring the build. So the CMake options that are going to that project that you're building. Uh, and then of course, build like make or CMake dash dash build, whatever you want to do, install, make install. Um, you get, you get the point. So when you, when you look at all of this documentation, um, that's the building block that you're that you're looking to do. What I have here on my machine is a very minimal example. Uh, there's this is just a single file super build with the super builds building one project. Um, but I wanted to use this as an example to talk through some of the issues that pop up. Um, one is this is a normal CMake list. Uh, a, a CMake super build is in fact a CMake project in and of itself. So uh, we, we have here are some of the common things, minimum, CMake minimum required. Um, I'll talk about CMake build type and install prefix in a sec. Uh, you got a project command, and then like other modules that come with CMake that are optional, you include external project from, from CMake, 
and then suddenly this command external project add, which is the centerpiece of uh, of making of building a, a particular project with uh, external project, um, this one command comes into being, and all this fancy stuff you get to inherit. External project add, you give it a name, and then there's a all the zillion options that you could read in documentation. But here's here we're going to talk through a little simple one, where I want to point to a particular release of a project called RK Common. It's a part of the suite of libraries that my group at Intel uh, develops. Uh, this is a little infrastructure library. A particular release of that, uh, these, this URL is generated by GitHub uh, for this tag, and it, this would download the zip of the source at that state. Uh, and then uh, when I want to go build RK Common, uh, or sorry, when external project does it, it invokes CMake. So this is CMake then invoking CMake. Uh, that these are some specific CMake arguments that we want to have passed to that underlying build of this project. So if I open up a terminal and I go to my build directory, which I already have, let's make sure this is completely clean. So I'm going to, so I have a build directory um, for this, my source super build example, that's this. It has one file in it, this one CMake list. And I'm in a build directory going to run CMake on this one CMake list. And let's see what we get. Looks like a normal CMake build so far. For my own sake, I, I like to have CMake install prefix on a super build project to be somewhere not on the machine because what's gonna happen, or not on the machine, not on like, because this would default to user local. Uh, what happens is, is that external project add, when it complete, it's gonna go all the way through the install process into some place. Now, what I like to do is use CMake install prefix of the CMake list that is running the super build. So remember, this CMake list is not the CMake list that's in this project. Um, I like to use CMake install pre prefix here to say, where are we going to install everything to? This is not a requirement. You get to choose every single time external project add runs. It is me saying that CMake install prefix of the underlying project, RK Common, is going to this CMake install prefix. But that's up to you. You, know, this, you can design a super build in a million different ways. Uh, that's just a, a, rule, a, a thing I like to do. So that's why I'm doing this, but you'll notice that I decided to initialize CMake install prefix under CMake binary dir, which is the build directory that we invoked CMake in to, to build this project. And so uh, under that install, and you'll notice we now have that directory as CMake install prefix by default. Of course, this is a cache variable. I can go and change this anywhere, but just know that's, that's a reason I do that. One thing to look out for. Second, is with CMake build type. When you encode a project with external project add, I mean, you control everything about the underlying CMake uh, variables that uh, you configure this project with, including build type. So what this would do is if I had a bunch of projects, I could have CMake build type of the super build itself. I could then decide to forward that to the underlying projects, whether this is release, debug, et cetera. Um, and then lastly, the same thing is true with compilers. If I were to, to have CMake CXX compiler be like Clang, that is of the, the super build CMake config, but the underlying external project add CMake run on RK Common is still a standalone entity. Um, so if you want to match the compiler on the super build with the individual projects, you just have to forward that variable on to the underlying project. So by default, my machine, everything's very default, so it's gonna find GCC. Uh, but if I, again, if I were to want to use Clang, then uh, I would either have to forward it or tell it here to use Clang with CMake CXX compiler. Uh, the reason that decoupling exists is because it lets you build different projects with different compilers if you had to do that. Like for instance, maybe the Intel compiler, maybe another project really likes Clang. Um, it, it, it allows you to, to specify that. So you see these three forwarded um, variables that I decided to, to forward here. That's what's gonna go to the underlying RK common. So enough talking, uh, let's, let's watch this happen. So I'm gonna go make dash J1, cause I have an 18 core machine. So this is gonna go real fast, but 
J1 for me is going to make sure it's serial. We're going to let this go through. Shouldn't take very long. Well, we can already start talking about it while this completes. What, what did we get here? Well, we got a project called RK Common, and CMake is going to look, hey, did I specify anything has to be pre-built before we got to RK Common? There isn't any because we didn't specify any. Uh, and so there's a bunch of subdirectories that then get created um, by default. And in the documentation, it specifies what they are. Uh, and then it's going to download this zip file. It's going to extract it. Uh, we didn't specify anything to like patch the source with anything. Uh, we configure it with CMake and then build it. And it finished building and then installed it to, you guessed it, install prefix. And then that ends up being CMake install prefix to where we wanted it. So that's a lot. That's a lot of things in this few lines of code. Uh, but we can explore a little bit more what happened. So if we do an LS uh, inside this build directory, we can look at RK common prefix, which is kind of like a weird default, but there's reasons for that. Um, if we look in here, it's kind of innocuous. Uh, you would see in the documentation, this layout would be by default. And notice that this name, RK common, matched this. Uh, so what we did is we got, if we look in, so under RK common prefix source, we can look, hey, we have, this is the extracted source directory. So we took the, it took the zip and extracted it to here. Um, if we look at RK common build, this is the local build uh, that was done of RK common. And then if we go back up, remember we set in install was where things got installed to and we got everything installed. So this is one project. Uh, it's not terribly exciting from a super build perspective, but this is the building block that then you make larger super builds with. And so once you understand how to sit and build one project like this, uh, you can then generalize it to N projects. And this is all running locally on the machine. So for instance, what I didn't mention here is that RK Common looks for TBB. Now, if you don't want to assume that TBB is on the machine, then you could have external project go fetch TBB and build it or fetch a pre-built binary of it. And the example we're about to look at, that's what I did. But just know that like this is the, this is physically exactly the same thing as if I decided to download that zip file. I, un I extracted it. I ran CMake and a build directory on it with all those options and then did a make install. It's, it's just automating all of those steps using CMake, using built-in things that CMake has. Now, this does beg an interesting question. It's really tempting to view external project as something that can be a, a good development environment. And I wanted to say a few words on that. So external project, its goal is to say, I have a fixed version of something. I know I can go get it. I can build it and install it and be done. What it's not great at, in my experience, let me know down in the comments if you have different experiences, is what it's not great at is being able to track in all of those sub projects that anything changed because it does not detect what all of the details are of the underlying project that it built. So it's not a great tool at developing one of these sub dependency projects and having a downstream super build be able to detect you're mucking around with the, the source in that. Now, what one compromise is that I can always come in into here. Uh, and if, if I wanted it, like, let's say I used Git the Git method instead of tarball or, or zip file method to get source. Um, if this was a clone Git repository, it, it is a Git repository. So I could always use a super build to like an initialize a local development environment and then, you know, use it as my directory structure. Uh, I don't prefer that. Uh, there are other people that I know that have used that uh, to their advantage. Uh, to say, um, just to manage your expectations, 
it's it may not be everything you need in a development environment when you have a bunch of libraries you're working on at the same time and you want a super build to to build all this stuff like kind of automagically uh it's it's not great at that it's really good at i'm going to go do that once and give you a final product so what we can do now is close this and head over to a, a bigger example now i have my own kind of little personal super build of osprey uh in up on github so it's under my namespace called super build osprey and there's a few things i've i've sprinkled in here uh, what i want to talk about is hey when you have more than one project how do you ex how do you do dependencies in my last episode i talked about CMake parse arguments and in a previous episode to that talked about functions and macros. This build subproject thing is something I built. Uh, it's a macro. But hopefully now that you have kind of the fundamental of what is one invocation of external project add do, it's going to fetch source, extract it, configure it, build it, install it. The only other piece to really talk about in terms of getting your appetite wet for, for a super build is how do I say build this project first and then build this next project? And that's external project add step dependencies. And so in your head, you'll have to substitute sub project name is something like Embry, RK common, et cetera. Um, but what you say is external project add, and I have a name like RK common. I have another external project add that goes and gets uh, like a binary release of TBB and ISPC and extracts those and puts those in the right place. And then uh, when we build RK common, we say, hey, TBB and ISPC are dependencies of RK Common, meaning uh, that it'll go fetch TBB and fetch ISPC first, and then only then it'll build RK Common. And then notice that RK Common is the dependency that for for Embry, OpenVKL, um, we we express all these dependencies between projects to make sure they're just built in the right order. What you still then have to do is make sure that each sub project is pointed to that project correctly. I have TBB and ISPC as kind of their own little custom files here to go like fetch these because I'm not building them from source in this super build just because that's what I felt like doing. That I establish, I'm the one who sets a variable. Um, so I include get TBB. That means this variable TBB path, I am deciding that I have put TBB here in in this build directory somewhere. I, I decided that layout to where I wanted to extract TBB to. That's where TBB path's coming from. This is not finding it on the system. This is, it's gonna go fetch TBB and we're gonna build all of these projects against the TBB we went, we went and fetched. Um, again, decision for this particular super build, you could make that configurable by having kind of some, you could if around like, we're gonna go look for it on the system, we're gonna look go download it instead. Um, up to you. I, just a choice I made here. But the point is, is that TBB root is something that RK Common needs if TBB is not just in a system location. And that's why I'm having to pass it here and here, etc. But hopefully you get the point that once uh, that, that once you have external project add, you can string these together and do fancy things. Uh, one thing that I'll also mention is that You'll notice that I don't specify any MD5s here. MD5s are let's do um, a checksum of the downloaded contents of the source zip to make sure that it's it's the right thing and what we expect and it, we downloaded it correctly. Um, the reason I don't do that is because I'm lazy, <laughs> because all of these projects come from Intel and come from my group at Intel, so I know all of the people involved. I'm not building any code that um, I'm not very involved with. Uh, and if as soon as if like I were to change to, oh, hey, OpenVKL 0 0.12, uh, that means I would have to go like figure out the new MD sum of that source there and all that. And it's nice to just come in here and change release numbers and it just just work. Um, it's just laziness. If, you, if you're building a super build that's going to go be used by a lot of people, use MD5 checksums. It's probably a good idea. And so that's it. This is, um, this is, a, a, this does a lot. You look like going and fetching TBB and ISPC pre-built binaries and then building one, two, three, four, five projects 
all in one install directory to make this nice usable package of all these projects. Uh, it, it It's actually a lot of work to do all of that, but yet it was this few lines of code to orchestrate it. Um, and, and what's great is because this is CMake, this is cross-platform. This CMake list runs on Linux, runs on Mac OS, and runs on Windows. Didn't have to specialize for those platforms uh, for the super build itself. Uh, each project, of course, has specific ways to make, like Osprey is able to build itself correctly for Windows, for Mac OS, for, for Linux. Um, so this actually is a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, you can get a lot out of external project add uh, without having to, to, like if you were to do this with bash files, you'd have to re-implement so many mechanics of of how the different, bunch of different ways to fetch source, the bunch of different ways to, to you might have to patch or update uh, what you what you fetched, uh, the mechanics of invoking CMake correctly on under uh, the correct build directory layout and source directory layout and all that. Um, this this just does that. Uh, so go use it. Go use it to your advantage. So that's it. I hope external project is a little less scary and maybe there's just enough there to go off and you can play with it yourself and make your own super build you need uh, to support your project and its dependencies and whatever you want to do to, to make a repeatable environment uh, that's even cross-platform. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, and down in the comments below, let me know what you think, any questions you have, and what you want to hear from next. And until next time, happy coding, everyone.